Welcome to another enlightening episode of Optimal Anesthesia, your trusted source for all things related to anesthesia and patient care. Today we have an important topic to explore, the intricate relationship between anesthesia medications and the QTC interval. Before we embark on our exploration of how anesthesia and the QTC interval are intertwined, let's first grasp why the QTC interval holds such significance in the realm of anesthesia. To begin with, the QTC interval serves as a pivotal tool for anesthesiologists to assess the risk of arrhythmias during surgical procedures. Specifically, it helps gauge the potential for a specific type of arrhythmia known as Torsades D points, TDP. TDP is a potentially life threatening ventricular tachycardia that can culminate in cardiac arrest. This risk assessment is fundamental to ensuring the safety of patients under anesthesia. Anesthesia frequently involves the use of medications, and some of these drugs pose the potential to prolong the QTC interval. These include medications like methadone, certain antimetics, and specific muscle relaxants. Anesthesia providers must be keenly aware of these effects as their choices in medication become paramount, particularly when dealing with patients who have pre-existing risk factors. Every patient is unique, and some individuals may present pre-existing medical conditions or take medications that directly affect their QTC interval. For instance, patients with congenital long QT syndrome or those on medications known to prolong the QTC interval are at higher risk. Anesthesia providers must meticulously consider these factors when planning and administering anesthesia. Now that we have grasped the importance of the QTC interval, how do anesthesia providers safeguard patients effectively? Before the surgical journey begins, a comprehensive preoperative assessment is conducted. This serves as a critical foundation, allowing anesthesia providers to meticulously review the patient's medical history, current medications, and assess any risk factors for QTC prolongation, including electrolyte imbalances. The selection of anesthesia medications is a pivotal decision. Anesthesia providers meticulously opt for medications with minimal potential for QTC prolongation whenever possible. This decision is tailor-made to meet the unique needs of each patient. During surgery, continuous electrocardiogram, ECG, monitoring is standard practice. Anesthesia providers keep a vigilant eye on the patient's QTC interval in real time, ready to take immediate action if significant prolongation is observed. This may involve discontinuing medications contributing to the prolongation, correcting any pre existing electrolyte imbalances, particularly low potassium and magnesium, is an essential aspect of patient care. These imbalances can exacerbate QTC prolongation, making their prompt correction paramount during surgery. Anesthesia providers are hyper-aware of potential drug interactions that could amplify the QTC prolonging effects of anesthesia medications. Comprehensive medication management ensures the utmost safety of patients. We're diving into a vital topic, common anesthesia medications and their influence on the QTC interval. Let's begin by unraveling the impact of inhalation anesthetics on the QTC interval. Agents such as sevoflurane and desflurane, staples in the world of anesthesia, are generally known to have a minimal impact on the QTC interval. But how about isoflurane? Isoflurane may modestly prolong the QTC interval, but in practice, the clinical significance of this effect is often negligible. Now, let's shift our focus to intravenous anesthetics and their relationship with the QTC interval. Propofol, a widely used intravenous anesthetic, is generally considered safe when it comes to QTC interval prolongation. It has shown minimal impact in this regard. Atomidate, another intravenous agent, also has a minimal effect on the QTC interval. However, it's worth noting that thiopental, although less commonly used today, has been associated with QTC prolongation in some studies. Opioids play a significant role in anesthesia. Let's explore their impact on the QTC interval. Opioids like fentanyl and remifentanyl typically have no significant effect on the QTC interval, which is reassuring for anesthesia providers. On the other hand, methadone, a potent opioid, has a notable potential for QTC prolongation. Its use requires careful monitoring to ensure patient safety. Muscle relaxants are essential in many surgical procedures. How do they interact with the QTC interval? Non-depolarizing muscle relaxants, such as rocuronium and vecuronium, 
are generally considered safe and do not contribute to QTC prolongation. However, succinylcholine, a depolarizing muscle relaxant, can lead to potassium release and, in rare cases, result in QTC prolongation. It's an instance where vigilance is crucial. Finally, let's explore the impact of anticholinergic medications used to counteract bradycardia induced by anesthesia. Both atropine and glycopyrrolate, while essential in specific situations, may have a modest effect on the QTC interval. In anesthesia, the QTC interval is crucial for assessing arrhythmia risk, impacted by certain medications and patient factors. Our vigilant monitoring and medication choices prioritize patient safety, ensuring safer surgeries and improved outcomes. Thank you for joining us at Optimal Anesthesia, and feel free to reach out with any questions or topics you'd like us to cover in future episodes.